uh, for uh, religious extremists, at least the ones uh, our military deals with, uh, homecoming, well, it's for them, I guess, a lot of times they know what's, when they leave whatever country they are to go to do jihad somewhere else, they know it's usually a one-way trip. So homecoming, I guess, the next step for them would be heaven or uh, whichever you know, metaphysical paradise they're thinking about. Next slide. And for Somali pirates, I think uh, <laughs> homecoming is either come home with a ransom or a Navy SEAL uh, dispatches you. <laughs> Next slide. And for us, I think for us, it's a little more convoluted. It's a little more uh, mixed, a little more nuanced. It's not really, uh, I think it's probably a decor why some soldiers, some uh, service members, warriors come back and uh, they, they have to grapple with these things because we come back to a divided country over political and ideological fault lines. Uh, of course, over the last 10 years, we've become a lot more polarized. Uh, people are definitely less compromising when it comes to their views. Uh, a public that is very uninformed about wars in general, they only understand, I mean, the best they're going to get it is through like a movie or a book or maybe like a friend, but definitely not, they don't have the understanding that most other countries really experience war on their own uh, geography. And so definitely not about sacrifice. I think as far as I can reckon, sacrifice means like putting a yellow ribbon on your car or like some, provide some sort of emotional support for a troop, like a beer or something, telling you they're great. But that's not really true support. Um, and of course about the Middle East and the Muslim world in general. We've got a, there's about a billion Muslims in the world. Obviously there's some issues there and uh, they're not going to be resolved anytime soon. But yeah, our public, uh, kind of, which elects the politicians, just understands the Muslim world through cliches, <coughs> stereotypes, or just maybe uh, you know, secondhand knowledge. And of course, a, a public that is confused uh, what it really means to support troops. So, you know, you've got the welcome home ceremony there, you've got anti-war protesters, you got, you know, God bless America, like pro-war people want to support the troops. So, it's a very mixed bag, guys, come back to, guys and gals. Next slide, please. So, uh, and the other interesting thing about homecoming, it's even changed in our own country. Like, our uh, grandfathers went to World War II. It's black and white. They fought bad guys. They were clearly bad guys. Like, you know, whether it was Japan that attacked us first or the Nazis. So then they came back uh, in complete victory. Like, their war was noble, and they achieved noble ends. Our fathers, on the other hand, that went off to Vietnam, uh, that was not the case. It was a war. Uh, that uh, by all, uh, at least by how, the way most people perceive it, that they lost, they came back home in disgrace and defeat. I'm putting that in quotes because I think that's a subjective statement. I don't want to make an absolute one. As for us, we go fight, uh, the way at least I see it, is it's an indefinite struggle that can be concluded neither in victory nor in defeat. Like your problem is with a population of one billion. There's not enough, uh, and, and, and uh, depending on your views, hopefully not too warped, uh, like crucifying the population that's bothering you and like kicking them out and killing them all, like went out of date around Romans, around the Roman times. So now uh, wars, there's many more factors to wars. So if a population is giving you a hard time, you can't just get rid of them, neutralize them. So this tells me that Muslims are going to be around a while, we're going to be around a while. And so this struggle uh, is going to be around a while. 